For nine generations, millions of people across western Kenya have trusted one family of traditional rainmakers to predict local weather patterns. Sworn to secrecy, the Nganyi family is able to forecast rainfall based on subtleties in the natural world that most people would never notice or look for. <laughs> The place is very densely populated and the families incidentally are large. We have done a, a socioeconomic survey and averagely the families are ranging from family households of seven to ten and the land holding is very small. Most people are subsistence farmers, living off small plots of land in an increasingly hostile climate. Uh, we've had uh, adverse climate effects, more droughts, maybe more floods coming in, and that one really affects the activities, uh, the economical activities of the community. <laughs> on the other hand, government meteorologists have satellites and other technologies to better forecast extreme weather and time, but they lack the credibility and community networking that the Nganyi family has built up over hundreds of years. Now, through the Nganyi Indigenous Knowledge Adaptation Project, the native weathermen and the modern meteorologists are working together. We are embracing the IK and integrating it with the modern science because we've been trying to reach the communities because when we issue our forecasts, which is a modern science, most of the people still believe in the, the, their local or the IK scientists within their communities. Anytime, whenever there is a drought, people come in crying, requesting why, why is it a drought, why, why are we getting this and this, why are we suffering? That means that they have the belief, without ours, they cannot get anything. They have that confidence in us. The Nganyi forecasters and the modern meteorologists meet seasonally to discuss their predictions and come up with a consensus before releasing an official forecast to the public.
Once the forecasts are made, government agencies issue advisories for each region to help the people take the proper precautionary measures. When floods are predicted, the communities can pile up what they can use in terms of firewood. When early warning is given of drought, livestock farmers are usually given advisories to sell off their stocks so that they don't run these huge losses that they run by keeping huge stock even when they keep dying one after the other. We ask the community to work with the Ministry of Agriculture where they are based on the ground, livestock, health, then they advise on mitigation measures, the types of crop that can be used, what health measures they should put in place to mitigate the effects of uh, any any epidemic that might rise from the drought or uh, floods. Climate change adaptation is vital to agricultural success, but it is equally important for the people to diversify their sources of income and be less dependent on the increasingly volatile weather for their livelihood. <laughs> One alternative source of income that the project is promoting organizes young people to plant tree seedlings to sell at the local market. We want to implement more seedlings so that we can sell them and earn a living from them. The youth, particularly the male youth, are too much into bangi smoking. So most of them look apathetic most of the times. And we think that if they can be incorporated, that would give them some hope and independence that may make them think that life is worth living than just drifting from one day to another in drunkenness. <laughs> Forest conservation is cultural conservation for the Nganyi because they rely on natural shrines in the forests to make their predictions. Recently, deforestation by charcoal burners has begun to encroach on the shrines. In the face of this and the effects of globalization, the project is taking several measures to protect the Nganyi indigenous knowledge so they don't lose their cultural identity. The Nganyi elders are currently working on a book that describes their methods to make sure the knowledge is archived and protected. The Kenya Meteorological Department has promised to build the Community Resource Center to make this and other information available to the public. This information will be put up once the, books, the book is done, it will be in a resource center. This resource center will generate some income by people who will be visiting. The project is also working with the Great Lakes University of Kasumu to develop a curriculum with the Nganyi community to teach and preserve local indigenous knowledge. They know when the rain is going to be there. And they do it through what you call experience and looking at the climate change. That kind of indigenous knowledge is what we want to find out, we want to tap it. The goal now is to reach out beyond the Nganyi community and inspire other organizations to take advantage of the plethora of indigenous knowledge in the world that is in danger of disappearing. <laughs>